What's the first thing you think of in your head when you hear the word villain? For me, it was this guy. His name is Verminous Scum, and he's the arch nemesis of Captain Planet, who delights in running factories that only create pollution. When that chemical turns the clouds into rain, the coal smoke will turn the rain into acid. Luckily, no one in the real world is as two-dimensionally evil as this guy, but when we see an actual person whose behavior is so heinous or outlandish as to be reminiscent of a fictional character, we call him a real-life villain. While villains in the FGC share similarities with ones in sports, especially fighting sports, it's not quite the same. Um, and this far, I'm going to take my talents to South Beach and um, join the Miami Heat. Fighting game tournaments have upwards of thousands of players, and top players play each other regularly. Money matches can happen spontaneously in post-tournament gatherings known as the Salty Suite. This makes the potential for beefs much higher. But I'll admit it now, nothing beats a good villain, and I think they can enhance a competitive gaming community. Before you call me something terrible in the comments section, there are definitely some caveats. Allow me to explain. I like these calm little moments before the storm. There are two basic elements that make an FGC villain. The first one is unprovoked trash talk. Nothing makes you a bad guy as effectively as good old trash talk, especially when you gloat about how easy your opponent is. Why should I waste my time practicing against him? I'm gonna beat him anyway. Now I don't even have you because I've beaten you. And you know what? In the end, it was easy. But it has to be genuine. Trash talk with obvious product placement isn't very convincing, and trash talking your close friends doesn't count. Every tournament, he gets second place. <laughs> To truly reach villain status, you have to watch how the pros do it. And I wanted to ask you your opinion. Oh, does Daigo suck? He does. <laughs> he does, man. I told you. I got him pregnant, you know what I mean? I got Daigo pregnant, dog. He's, he's been pregnant for the last three years, okay? I haven't been paying the child support because they don't have that rule in Japan. However, trash talking can be used by heroes as well, as long as it's in response to a villain. Expose you as a fraud, yeah, I'll be blowing you up. Who said you were a god? I know it wasn't plot. Been here 10 years and you know I'm showing up. For a man in many words, I think you said enough. You have to hand it to the melee guys for the production value. Speaking of which, Leffen, the target in this video, is someone who has trash talked so much, the Smash community compiled a list of things he said online and made it into a file called evidence.zip, which has now become a meme. All I gotta say is evidence.zip. Evidence. Stop. This is looking more like a body bag dot zip right now. Zip him up. Jokes aside, his comments were inflammatory and hurtful, and ultimately got him banned for a year from tournaments in his home country of Sweden. After an apology letter and some reflection, he was unbanned and became one of the top players in Melee by defeating the five gods of the game and earning a sponsorship with Team Solo Mid. And this brings up the other fundamental characteristic of a villain. Winning. If you keep trash talking, but don't ever win, you become what's known as a clown. The greatest villains are powerful people who pose a serious threat to the protagonist, not clowns who troll for attention. Unless you're the Joker, but you know what I mean. The more you can win, the more trash you can talk. Apologies to NorCal for bringing this up, but Tommy Guns is an interesting case because he's neither a clown nor a supervillain. He starts trash talking NorCal unprovoked, gets Crack Fiend to fly over to Texas for a grudge match, wins 7-3, the exact score that he predicted, and gloats about it on Twitter can't get much more villainous than that, right? But one thing prevented him from reaching S-tier villain status. He hedged his bets constantly by saying he could easily body anyone in NorCal except a handful of people. I understand he was being realistic, but there's a reason the Emperor doesn't say things like Your friends will die except for Huda Man, Ricky, and Crazy Cuban Guy. Having the potential to defeat anyone is what makes a villain so memorable. As a matter of fact, the ability to beat anyone and consistently win is so powerful, it can actually make you a villain without any trash talk. Ever watch the Roadrunner cartoons and wish that Wile E. Coyote would catch the Roadrunner just once? It's the same feeling people had when Justin Wong ruled Marvel 2, Chris G and F Champ in Marvel 3, and Infiltration in Street Fighter 4 during his peak. And he's got it! 2-0 for Infiltration has sucked all the life out of this room. But obviously, trash talk and winning aren't the only ways to get the public rooting against you. You can also do this by beating women, which is why I want to make a distinction. There are villains that enhance the competitive nature of the game, and villains that make people turn off completely. 
It's not always clear in every case, but some actions obviously do nothing to help the game. For example, trash talk works if you're picking on someone close to your skill level, but doing it to people who clearly don't know how to play the game is just going to make them quit, which is the worst thing that can happen to a fighting game or any competitive game. If you follow StarCraft 2, you probably know about Naniwa and his trash talking. Uh, I didn't speak to him for like a year, and then he gives me a thumbs down, so I'm wondering why he's such a bitch. He stirred the pot and got some hype rivalries going, especially with a Korean player named Ness T. And I don't know what to say, guys. G -G. Ness T, G. Oh my god. And Ness T has just been to throw. Ness T is not happy right now, you can tell. And a thumbs down from Nanoa. I thought he was a dead genius, but apparently he's just an idiot. <laughs> what he did made no sense. But at Blizzard Cup 2011, Naniwa and Nesti would meet again after both were in an unwinnable situation in their group. Because Naniwa knew that winning the game wouldn't advance him, he just threw away the match in front of his hyped up audience. He sent his probes and took his hand off the keyboard. I mean, Naniwa manages to throw away the game in 1 minute and 26 seconds. This move is definitely villainous, but it kills the game and the hype, something StarCraft 2 really can't afford right now. A villain who really loves the game and loves bodying his or her opponents can bring a lot of hype and increase the competition. F-Champ sums it up nicely in his Daily Dot interview. I really love the, the feedback and the energy that I get from the fans when they boo me. Like, because that, <laughs> that's when I know that they're so invested into watching how to enjoy fighting games. And the numbers on YouTube don't lie. People love watching bad guys lose, including me. But are they bad people in real life? I don't know because the players I've met aren't really known as trash talkers. But it does seem like a trope that heel characters are usually pretty chill in real life. Tommy Guns, as much shit as he talks online, you meet him in person and it's it's a completely different guy. It's kind of offsetting actually. Yes. Like what well, you run into that mouth like, what the hell's wrong with you? He's so friendly, you weirdo. <laughs> If you have any interesting villain stories, let me know in the comments and subscribe for more videos like this. This was Gerald from Corey Gaming, and thanks for watching.